What's up, y'all? Yet another one today. We are going to tie the rubber-legged stonefly. Well, my version of the rubber-legged stonefly. Another great fly for trout and steelhead. Let's make it happen. Before we get started, go ahead and make sure you comment down below any idea for a fly you want me to tie. It will enter you into a drawing to win all the flies I've tied this month, and I will make a video. Okay, the rubber-legged stonefly. There are many, 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 many different ways to tie this fly. This is one of the versions that I like to do. Uh, it separates mine from, the way that I do it, separates mine from what you're gonna see most of the time on the YouTube machine. So, I'm gonna start you with a salmon steelhead hook and some lead wire. I'm gonna weight this fly down so it gets down to the bottom. And depending on the body of water you're fishing, it depends on how much lead you use. I want this to be pretty heavy, so I put a decent amount on there. And make sure your wraps are nice and tight. Twist them and push them together. Make a nice tight lead wrap on there. Next, we're going to grab some thread. I'm using black thread on this one. It doesn't really matter what color you use. You can use a brown or, or even white. Any color, really. <clears throat> Trim off the tag end. And this has kind of had some focus issues. I don't know why, but oh well. Bear with me. I'm still trying to fine tune everything. Kind of like my skills when it comes to wrapping thread, it uh, snaps a lot. This is why you should like my videos, because I'm more realistic. <laughs> if you're just getting into it, <laughs> this is going to happen to you, so this is this shows what to expect. You know, you get these guys in their 50s and 60s that have been doing this their entire lives, you know, that's setting them up pretty high. So. We got guys like me that have only done it for a few years, and you know that's a little more accurate. Anyway, go ahead and wrap that on there, secure the lead. I put a thread dam on each side of the lead, keep it from going back and forth. Although, if you tie this fly right, you shouldn't have that problem. Now, I'm taking some rubber legs. These were just brown rubber legs. I added some stripes with a black sharpie. I just wanted to add it, make it a little different than just brown. But go ahead and start your tail section and the antenna all one piece. Well, it's two separate strands that are still stuck together. I have to use it, this uh, connected thing. So. Easiest way to tie in the tail antenna. And I'll leave them on the legs, tail and antenna, I will leave them connected until I absolutely have to take them apart, so you know. Grab you three strands that are connected, and those are going to be the legs. And like I just said, keep them connected, it makes it a lot easier to work with. So make sure you got it even there in the middle, and then I do a loose wrap. That way I can move it around how I like it. Got a loose wrap, and then when I get it where I want it, then I'll tighten my wraps down and figure eight them as well. Get them locked in place. Now, most guys use chenille. I'm not using chenille. I'm gonna use dubbing. I'm gonna dub my body on there. And I'm gonna use like four, five, six, seven different colors all at once. So all my browns and my black my tans, even a little orange, uh, rust color, uh, olive, and even some of the gray. I'm gonna mix them all together. And how you do that is you pull out a bunch like that. There's like four different colors in there. And then you pinch and pull, overlap, pinch and pull, overlap, and so on and so forth. And that blends it together. So when you put your noodle on your thread, it'll all blend. And I think, you know, in my opinion, makes this look 
more natural than just using one color or even two colors gives it that uh, bottom of the river creature look <laughs> I guess you could a good way to put it but uh, anyway wrap it up and then I like to go one wrap underneath the tail before I work my way up the fly. And by doing just small segments like that, as long as the colors that I use are consistently being mixed, it will add a different kind of effect to the fly. You'll see it in the end. Works pretty cool. Works pretty cool. Again, pinch and pull, pinch and pull, overlap. And then put the dubbing noodle on your thread. They don't have to be super thin, but you don't want them too thick as well, so kind of whatever feels right. <laughs> Getting over this cold. I'm almost done with it. Not as sniffly. I'm going to be making a, another video probably tomorrow. Maybe tonight. I might squeeze it in there tonight. But uh, starting a new thing I'm going to do. I did my first one tonight and, you know, I didn't have a big crowd or, you know, even a small group. <laughs> but I had a couple of people jump on there and, and hang out with me for a little bit. I'm doing, I'm gonna do some live streams. I'm not exactly sure ex when I'm gonna do them, um, but it is something that I decided I want to do and uh, get you guys involved, especially after this month's giveaway. Uh, there's gonna be other giveaways and other ways you can win, so I think I'm gonna do some stuff with live stream and uh, just kind of tie some flash for you guys live to start, and then maybe we'll do some other videos on the live stream. But, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on there. Uh, commenting, let me know how I'm doing, asking questions, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. We're uh, growing at a pretty decent rate, about two a day, subscriber-wise, so that's awesome. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Hopefully, within the next few months, we can get up there 200 or, or even 300, so I'm excited. Looking forward to it. And uh, we got some, some cool things planned for this channel. So look forward to that. Stay tuned for some of the cool things that are, that are going to happen. So uh, we made it to the legs. This is when you're going to start separating them and dubbing in between them. And it'll just kind of evenly separate them. By doing it this way, your legs will be even on each side of the fly so that's another reason why i do it this way you can do them separate or you can do like a one strand on one side that ends up being two legs and then another strand on the other side that ends up being two legs uh, there's a bunch of different ways to do it this is just one way that i like to uh, it's an easier way to work with the the legs they like to get in the way and just be a pain in the butt so this is one of the easier ways to to work around that even though I make it look like I'm struggling <laughs> trust me it's a lot easier than than I make it look right now I'm just getting more dubbing I'm almost done you can kind of see I know it's not in super focus right now I'll fix that here in a second but you can kind of see the colors I was talking about it's it's a mix of the browns and tans and Everything, <clears throat> everything, it looks more natural. More dubbing. Make sure it's on there nice and good. You can kind of see I was having some issues right before this wrap where it was loose. You don't want loose dubbing. You want it to be a nice tight noodle of dribbling on your on your uh, thread. So. And up to the antenna. Now, when I get up to the antenna, I go one wrap underneath them, but it's a small bit of dubbing, maybe two wraps, um, or three depending on how thin it is. I don't want it too much, I don't want too much dubbing up there. 
um, because you still have to be able to attach your line to it. So right here, I'm snipping off the remaining amount and then kind of just wrapping it in, forming the head with my thread. Do a whip finish. And then you can see I got some dubbing hanging out on top. Sink that off too. Kind of trim it up a little bit. It was a loose wrap that got away from me. We're almost done. So next thing I'm going to do, focus it in there for you guys. There you go. And I'm going to take a Sharpie. And I'm going to color the back. Just give it a little bit more black. Just on the back. And then I'm going to take my finish after I separate the legs I'm gonna take some varnish and put a nice coat on top of the entire fly this will give it more like a, a shell type exoskeleton look on this fly shake it up and put a decent amount on top of the fly <clears throat> that will soak it in, it'll put a nice coat throughout the fly, but it'll help make that top part a little more resistant. And that's about it. That is the rubber leg stone fly. One of the first big trout I caught out here in the Rogue River with my stone fly. Hand tied, of course. There it is. And you can trim the legs up, make them all even. But if you do it right, they should already be even. That's about it though. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below and give me an idea for the next fly that I'm gonna make. And uh, I, I love doing this. I look forward to comments for ideas, so keep them coming. guys that's going to do it for this one make sure that if you are not already you subscribe to the channel uh, hit that notification bell so you know when i post new videos or go live also make sure you hit that like button comment down below and share these with your friends and family and until next time you guys take it easy and i'll catch you on the next one Thanks.